Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ronan Mejia, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This week, I got uh, six new reviews for you folks at home. Uh, that's going to include Inflame, The Completion of the Chronicles, book number six, Cake Cause for War, Reality Banners, book number seven, also Ravenous, uh, which is a zombie apocalypse Lit RPG, and then uh, the Engineer, The Weight of It All, uh, and uh, Concordat Online, which is a uh, a title that's a little bit older, and last but not least, a new uh, webcomic called uh, Returner's Magic Should Be Special. So, all kinds of interesting stuff for you folks for this week. Uh, but before we get into any of that, of course, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. And in the Lit RPG News, I uh, just have one quick, good, uh, heartfelt... <laughs> Uh, a bit of good news. Uh, one of the books we're reviewing this week, uh, Inflamed by Dakota Grout, has done amazingly well since it's not, it's only been a couple days. Uh, but the story has already hit the top of the Amazon charts and literally out of uh, the, the millions of books that are available on Amazon, this book in particular has hit uh, number five, um, uh, which is a, an amazing um, accomplishment for Dakota Grout. Uh, his, his books generally do super well. He's a very rabid fan base, including myself. Um, but this, this one just did phenomenally well. Uh, uh, it, it, it'll of course go up and down as, as sales go on for the weeks, the month, of course. Um, but this is a good accomplishment. And on the podcast, we generally try to, um, highlight when good things happen to the people in our genre. So congratulations to Dakota Kraut, Mountain Door Press, of course, it's the company he runs. Um, so good, good job on, on, on that. He also actually got number six on the, uh, audiobook version of this title as well. So not only doing well in the ebook, but also on the audiobook. So go grab either one if, uh, if you've, if you haven't. So congrats, man. Okay. On the stuff that is out now, uh, have had a chance to read it. It is out for you to enjoy though. That includes the, uh, divine apostasy book number four. Lots of folks have been enjoying this one already. Um, it's called the fourth secret on to shadowed kingdoms book number two the call of the coven also out right now as is the fourth book in the bone knight series the fifth volume in the god game series and the ninth book in the rise to omniscience series uh, also the null for book number two is out called visceral uh the dungeon crawler carl book number three is out um i already started it enjoying it immensely um also out though is ash legends of the nameless world progression game of story don't have more to say about that. Uh, a new story from David Osborne called The Arbiter, Midgard. Also, the second book in the Beast Realm series uh, by Portal Books. Um, also, the second book in the, the Avila Online series called The Power of Word uh, by Amber Lane, who does good um, progression um, 4X uh, game, game like kind of stuff. So, good stuff there. Also, there's this book called the goblin summoner um by the author who does the uh we actually reviewed his books thing last week um star commander series um uh, which is a very space little be you know rts stuff uh, i'll give this one a shot just because the author has uh, shown that they kind of are capable of writing good stories that i enjoy but if other people don't seem to always like cling to them this one is a deck building little pg so we'll see how that turns out um also out though is the 10th book in the dragon heart series for fans of uh Wuxia, um, RPG progression stuff that's there. Uh, also, Winterborn, book number three by Stuart Gross, um, which is this is his uh, fantasy uh, Little Bit G series um, with the female protagonist. So, uh, always interesting stuff there. Also, out is They Called Me Mad and uh, the Apocalypse um, Fair System, System of the Apocalypse, book number two, actually, by Macronomicon. Um, book number one in the series has a, had a different character originally, uh, like this giant turtle being attacked by all sides. Um, the author redid the first cover in the series, so you might not recognize it, um, putting um, female characters on, on the cover instead, I think. Uh, but I, I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of reviews for this word, and I don't think a lot of people know it. it's actually out. Um, cause the first book had a, a lot of like really positive, amazing reviews. This one's a thing had like 10 so far. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't quite make sense considering, you know, how popular the first book is. So if you, if you like the first book, um, the second book's out, just, just letting you know. Uh, also the idol system book number seven is out and the second book in the Unted series, uh, Necronancy. Um, and, oh. Uh, Justin Miller's Worldkeeper, the latest book in that series. I want to say this one's like book 
eight or nine. Um, it's hard to tell because the cover is identical and the author does not, uh, unfortunately, uh, put uh, like volume numbers or book numbers, like book number five or six or seven or eight. It's just different title, <laughs> different title, same series name, uh, and, and re recycling covers. But for fans who of Justin Miller, who've enjoyed his stuff, uh, the latest one is out in the series for you to, to enjoy. Um, in audiobooks, we have a bunch of good stuff as well, uh, including in Capacious Chronicles, book number six. Uh, we're reviewing the ebook version of that. Um, also, Unbound Death Lord, book number three, is out as an audiobook, as is the Heavenly Throne, book number three. And um, Dungeon Worlds, Reborn Online series by Aurora Weiss, is out as an audiobook. This one didn't do as well as I, 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 I think the author is expecting, but hey, some folks have enjoyed it. Um, also, the second book in this trilogy is Broken series is out as an audiobook, as is the uh, Small Unit Tactics book number one. Um, and uh, our Cameo Online Chronicles book number four is out as an audiobook, as is the Firebrand series book number three, which is a, um, a side series in the Brooding Gate Online universe. Um, also, Ravenous, where again, we're reviewing the ebook version of this book, but the audiobook is out as well. Um, the Dungeon Slayer book number two, uh, which is a Tower Climber story, um, is, is out as an audiobook as well, as is the Broken Battle Mage and the Keepers of Limbo, the range series, and the Cyphercraft book number two. Also, Great Blood, uh, I think it's Great Blood Chronicles, um, the Great Blood book number two out is as out as an audiobook. Okay. There you go, on to stuff that's coming out in the near future. This is just me reading more stuff, but it's a good way to kind of see if your favorite book is coming out soon. Um, I scour Amazon uh, for all the release dates for, for stuff that I know it's actually gonna be Little G from authors that are that are reliable. Um, and I try to put together a list for you so you can plan your reading schedule, your pay schedule, or even your publishing schedule. If you're an audio for your author, this is a nice list to have uh, to see what you're going to be coming from and finding a little niche for yourself uh, to, to, to release, um, April the 5th, it'll be the Nell form book number two, sorry, book number one, the new series. Um, April the 9th, it'll be Volper Alpha Rome book number one. Uh, April the 12th, it'll be the in the system book number two on uh, April the 13th, the Trinity of the high book number three, April 15th, the good guys book number 11, killing them awfully. On uh, April the 20th, the Rogue Merchant book number five. April the 30th, The Rise of Mankind. This is a new story from Jez Cahilo, Cah uh, Cahillo. Sorry, man. Um, but it's it's a, it's a story. <laughs> T.J. Reynolds' third book in the Guild Course series will be out on April the 30th. May the 1st, it'll be Awaken Online Hellion. On May the 4th, it'll be Towers and Rest book number two. On May the 4th, the Heavenly Thrones book number five. May the 4th, it'll be Jeff the Game Master book number one. May the 10th, uh, the Guns of Keldora, which is the Factory of Gods book number four. May the 10th, Product Stellar book number four. May the 11th, Beta Testers book number six. May the 12th, Underdog book number six. May the 13th, The Alchemist book number five. On May the 14th, it'll be The Range, book number two. May the 18th, the second book in He Who Fights with Monsters, book number two. On May the 18th, Discardian, book number seven. May the 20th, in NPC's Path, book number four. May the 21st, The Great Centurion Punic Wars, book number three. May 24th, The Prince of Power. Um, on May 25th, The Sleepless Ones, book number six. On May 25th, Hex World. Roll, a game of Little Bridge Adventure by Kevin J. Anderson, if you don't know who that is. Um, he is a very uh, prolific uh, fantasy and science fiction author who's written in the series of Dune um, in the Star Wars universe. Quite a number of books. Like he, he, I think he has well over 100 titles to his name um, in various franchises, uh, but also just independent um, fantasy and sci-fi stuff as well. So this is this is interesting uh, to, to see a major author uh, like a mainstream author come into the genre from what i've been told um this is a reworking of something he's already he, he put together um a while ago um uh so we'll have to see how the how that how that's been reworked uh how how entertaining it is so we'll we'll give it a shot when it comes out but that'll be out on may 25th so look forward to it uh on may 31st it'll be the dungeon slayers book number three the dungeon leader uh on june the 7th it'll be fantasia book number one uh by simon Vale, uh who's a member of the community a lot of people know from from facebook the literary uh, uh book group uh from um 
the Magic Drum Books. He's one of their uh, translators and, and, and spokespersons, and he's writing. He's written a, a full-on story uh, for you folks to enjoy, and that'll be out on, again, June the 7th. On June 29th, it'll be Primacy Online, book number six. On June 30th, it'll be Tower of Ruin, volume two. So there you go, all kinds of stuff for you to enjoy uh, in the near future on to new releases and reviews there. Okay, first review for the week is going to be In Flame, The Completions Chronicles, book number six, written by Dakota Kraut. It is 420 pages, $3.99 price right in that sweet spot. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, and here is the author's description. Invasion and sabotage. Two civilizations doing anything to exist. War crimes are the norm. Joe takes his first step into exile and is promptly unable to breathe. This new zone has high, a higher concentration of power, magnitude stencher. His first task is to survive, but mere survival is the least of his concerns. The zone he has landed on has been in a state of constant war for thousands of years, a tug of war between the elven and dwarven societies. Not choosing a side is the same as declaring both to be your personal enemy. Though he is resistant, Joe reluctantly decides to go with a group that he thinks will help him grow the most and is instantly plunged into their bitter war. To gain the freedom he desires, Joe needs to turn his to the less savory aspects of his class. Engulfed by darkness, Joe can only hope he will be able to snuff out the light. So there we go. Um, this is like a six book and a continuing series that I really always enjoyed. Um, and this one is no different. This is story is a little bit of a reset uh, for the main character because he's going to a different zone um, where he doesn't have any of his friends. He doesn't have any of the allies or, or groups that he's that he that we've grown to 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 rely on and the story and so it's a reset of the main character becomes a much smaller kind of solo journey in some respects um and it kind of shrinks things down and i think that's a good thing because i'm very much uh in a serial series and a series that just doesn't really have a particular ending um the story generally gets bigger, bigger, bigger. You get into town building and nation building and PVP and nation, nation stuff, and it gets really big and epic. Your battles get really out of scale, um, and it becomes too much sometimes. And a, and a nice little reset like this, where it's the main character kind of starting over again, where he's not the omnipowerfulest you know person in, in the zone. Where he is kind of starting over, not necessarily the levels or anything, uh, but comparatively to other other characters, other other people in, in the zone, uh, he feels again like a newbie, feels a little more fragile, um, and so his his gains and his progression feel a little more um, uh, impactful, and that's definitely what happens here. Um, the main character goes into his zone, has to choose between these two factions, learn how to survive, uh, just just to breathe, um, and so that's a nice. It's a really nice beginning to set up the uh, vulnerability for the main character, and so his the way he learns to grow within this group again really is incorporating kind of the core things of of, of, his, of his class specializations. Um, and, and you get a lot of good RPG progress, and you get a lot of good stuff, and you get a lot of smart, intelligent use of those abilities where he's, again, not super OP anymore. Um, so you you still get good training, crafting, spending of class abilities, um, good fun faction quests that are interesting, lots of good puns and jokes that the series is known for. Um, and just like a lot of good little arcs um, that I think any reader in general will enjoy, but especially, you know, the readers of this particular series. So for me, I had, I had a blast with the story. I had a really good time. Um, kind of going back to a slightly smaller scale story, which I really enjoyed. So for me, it gets a score of 7.8 out of 10. Really thought it was really good. Um, that's In Flame, The Completion of Chronicles, book number six, with a score of 7.8 out of 10. Big recommend. Okay, next up is going to be Cause for War, Reality Banners, book number seven, written by um, Michael Antimanov. This is a Russian translated liberty story. It is 481 pages. It is $6.99. It is not available on Kindle Limited. These ones generally are at first, and even later they might be, but as of this recording, nope. Um, here's the author's description of the story. The army of Earth is being sent on its first tour of duty. Its 50,000 proud and valiant troopers are the best of the best, full of hope for brilliant victories and spoils of war that can help Earth's, hum Earth's humanities uh, along its development. There's just one problem, though. The Operation's Gecko commanders view their human vassals as mere cannon fodder, good only for plugging up holes in the defensive line and shipping out to the Space War's most punishing hotspot where the chance of survival is practically nil. 
How should the Kung of Earth behave in this situation? Disobey the, sw the Swerzen's orders, draw their hour, and put his home planet under the threat of complete annihilation? Or make a play for the freedom of humanity in a game of his own? So there you go. That that, is, that really touches, <laughs> honestly, the tip uh, of, the, of the storylines in this in this novel. Um, full disclosure, I received a copy for review. I did purchase a copy when it became available. Um, this is another Slice of Life Liberty story that continues the adventures of Nat and his crew. This is a very much Slice of Life story. There's not necessarily these big planned out arcs. A lot of the story is really just the main character going on these adventures, and they're very interesting adventures. Um, but they don't always tie together. Like all the little mini arcs of the story don't always necessarily tie back to this like big major arc. Um, and for some people that's an issue for others like myself is like, I don't really care. The mini adventures are very entertaining. The main character is entertaining his, his progression within the, um, MMO parallel <laughs> universe game thing that has happening here, um, is, is always interesting. Uh, so I've always enjoyed every single novel. This one I did enjoy as well. I did feel that, again, um, there wasn't as much progression in some plot lines that I was expecting or hoping for. Um, still, there's there's a, quite a bit of setup in, in for for other events uh, in this series, which I'm sure we're going to be taking care of at some point. Um, the, the action is still good in this story, good relationship development, good banter between characters, um, but a lot of it really is just setting up situations and setting up storylines that will be resolved in the future. Um, so it's still sort of a very entertaining story. Not what one I would probably give to somebody who is, isn't already a fan. Fans of the series be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to go on another adventure with Nat. Um, is, this is again very space oriented at this point. Uh, so space battles, pew pew, um, advancement of his class stuff, his psionics, uh, interesting little again mini arcs in in the story of these mini adventures he goes on but not a lot of like big plot advancements so uh just be aware of that going into it i'm sure you have a good time gets a score of 7.4 out of 10 uh, which is slightly above, below average good it's like oh this this lost a little bit for me but still on the whole uh, an enjoyable story so it's cause of war reality benders book number seven with a score of 7.4 out of 10. Okay, my next up is going to be wrapping up a zombie apocalypse letter reading, Nec Necronic Apocalypse, book number one, written by David Pantry. Um, it is 529 pages, it is $4.99, and it's available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. An unstoppable curse, a dead man displaced from his time. How do you survive the zombie apocalypse when you started it? Digby Graves, a deceased medieval peasant with delusions of grandeur, is trying to figure out how the hell he ended up in Seattle 800 years after his death. Also, why does he have necrotic magic coursing through his zombified body? Added to that is the fact that he made a terrible first impression the moment he woke up by lunging at the first person that came into a biting range. Now the cursed he unleashed is loose in the world. Digby has a target on his back and only fragment, fragmented memories of his death. He needs to survive long enough to put the pieces back together, learn what it means to leave the Horde, and master his power over the dead. Digby might even find a few accomplices along the way, if he can hold them hold off from eating them. The end of the world is gonna get weird. Okay, um, this is a it's a it's a zombie apocalypse story told from the point of view of a zombie apocalypse, a zombie who is uh, displaced in time, <laughs> I guess a little bit, about eight hundred years. That's kind of a you know kernel of what it is. Um, I'd say the beginning of the story is a little bit tedious. Um, the introduction of, of the, the premise is like, I'll keep it unique, uh, displaced in time, a uh, zombie from 18 years ago. Um, this is a pretty different start, but beyond that um, initial nugget, the beginning of the story is, is, is just him, Omo, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a different place in time. What, what, what's going on here? Oh, look, zombie apocalypse, I'm making zombies. Um, and him kind of just exploring that bit. Of, he, he comes across a couple different people um, that he, of course, either eats, uh, or saves, or, you know, just, just kind of interacts with, without trying to spoil things too much for you. Um, but there's no real purpose to the story in the first, I'd say, uh, quarterish. Um, and it's not really until you get a very clear antagonist that's introduced in the story about that point, about 20, 25%, that the story really seems to get going and finding its legs. Um, there's, there's definitely setup of other things happening in that, in the first like 20, 25%. Um, but again, it, I, it felt a little bit tedious for me in that I wasn't really sure what the 
point of the story was what what the goal should the main character was besides you know leaving the city um so so once those things were established once there's a very clear bad guy or at least uh, antagonistic um entity uh to to the main character uh you get goals you get stakes and so the story really does clarify a, a bit more and for the most part, I really did enjoy the story. Um, there are a few places in it where the game mechanics of the story felt a bit forced or it felt like um, the author kind of goes on this, this, this tangent that doesn't really lead anywhere. For example, um, someone who's over 800 years old or who, who existed in a world 800 years ago, um, he, for some reason, seems to speak perfectly modern English along with, you know, um, slang. Um, he, he also, there's a slight um fudging of some game mechanics that were established uh so the main character can, can just kind of do cool things or practicing them once and getting new skills and abilities which which really um isn't what's described um i think the undead horse bit in the story was like oh that's that's interesting it doesn't have a point uh and there's just like a, a callback in the other than that i don't see why it exists in the story but i, I get the author's just oh look that's a cool thing to do let's it play along with that for a second um that's perfectly fine it's just like oh it's just, for me as a reader it's like that doesn't go anywhere um and maybe it's something that authors thought that's a cool thing to have i'm gonna write it in because it's fun and that's great um uh for me those are just tiny drawbacks because they took away from a bit of my enjoyment of this trip and that they didn't make sense they felt a little forced in uh for for me at, at times um but for the most part really decent story um again interesting setup for, for for a zombie from another time essentially coming on the road and accidentally setting up a zombie apocalypse um i've read um anytime I, I get a monster main character i expect a little bit of more monstrousness um and that that exists to a degree um in that the main character is a zombie um he never wanted to be a zombie so he, he doesn't actually try to do bad things he ends up doing them i think the the, the most monstrous part is that he ends up accidentally eating a couple people um in the beginning we can't control it but it, so it the even the author kind of gives them a, a free pass in 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 being monstrous, um, which I, I I understand that you want your characters to be heroic, um, but as a monster, he has to do these things to, to survive. Um, but to take away that aspect of, of, of choice, it felt like a little bit of I really would have rather appreciated him choosing consciously to 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 do what he needed to do to survive instead of just it, it being a default. Oh, he's, he's bad, but it doesn't mean to be bad. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's the default ravenous state of, a, of the main character to do it. Um, or seeing him explore, um, what he has to do to survive with these, um, zombified monster powers. Uh, the main character kind of gets to dip his toe in, in a couple different zombie classes. Um, instead of developing a clear powerful path or even having like a, a alternative like minions who are are clearly developing a one of those classes uh to be as powerful as possible so in that respect the, the rpg progression was a little bit uh, mixed um there were some really interesting things uh, a few class powers are like oh that's kind of cool but they, it's not really developed as much as i, I think i would have liked to have seen it. or maybe the author is just kind of putting some of that development uh, path work it, you know saving for book two or three whatever the case is either way i was like oh that that's neat probably didn't go as far as i was hoping it would in the smart use of, uh, of those mechanics necessarily but still fairly decent um the fights are mostly well done. Neat tactics and a few of them. I thought, oh, that's I was that was pretty clever. Um, again, RPG stuff, regular clear rules, undead theme powers, consistent power games. I could plan a build for a zombie character, so you know that there's enough information there um, for the RPG progression. So good stuff there. Overall, um, over the there were like a few like issues, story or game rule issues for me. Fairly good read. And probably the novel I, uh, from the author that I've enjoyed the most. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, had an overall good time, uh, 7.3 out of 10 for me. Uh, that's a good review score. Uh, still, just with issues. Uh, that's wrapping it. Say Zombie Apocalypse, Little Beauty Story, Necrotic Apocalypse, book number one, uh, with a score of 7.3 out of 10. So there you go. And next up we have Dungeoneer, The Weight of It All, um, a little bit of fantasy adventure written by J.J. Thorne. This is the second book in the series. Um, it is 318 pages, $1.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description. With new knowledge, training, and practice under his belt, Terrence's rank once abilities will be put to the test against the monsters in his path. 
test. The first semester of prep is over, but an old tormentor, an unlikely instructor, a harsh test, and a tiresome journey will continue to push his limits. Can Terrence overcome them all? Will he buckle, and can the stress push him to rank up? Elsewhere, Uncle Tom and his engineering team find something unexpected in the dungeon. After months of fighting, they are ready to earn a profit from their toils. Can they handle their challenge, or will they die like so many others before them? Will the risk be worth it? So there we go. Um, this is another serial, um, plethoric story in the series, most of which still takes place in the Magical Academy. So if you read book one, that storyline completely continues. Um, again, there are secondary uh, point of view storylines going along with the serial nature of things. Um, which is also mentioned in the novel description. And that continues on as well. Uh, I found that to be a little bit distracting. So I was hoping again, the story to focus on the characters um, that I consider the main characters in the series um, instead of this like secondary story that, that kind of seemed to exist just to give you action. Um, but it is what it is. Um, the action of the story still continues for overall, um, even if it's mostly just from that, to that third party group. Uh, the story and the main character and his friends are mostly taking classes, training their powers. They do want a bit of adventure of their own, which is which is nice to see at least that they did something. Uh, there is an actual bit of leveling uh, this time around, so I'm like, yay, finally! <laughs> I think that was probably my biggest issue with the RPG mechanics in book number one was that oh, the main character's powers progress by percentages, but he doesn't actually level or get like new powers to play around with. And said he's really just for mo most of the story, kind of learning about all these magical academy things uh, like knowledge, practicing dungeoning classes, um, and almost doing this um, cultivation esque aspect of using magic. Um, but his his real powers are just look at that thing. I know what that weight is. Look at there's a notification button, and that's that's all it was in book number one, and it never progressed past that. Um, and in book two, it actually progressed past that uh, at least eventually. Truly, it eventually does. Um, and the progression is exactly what you thought it was. Um, I won't spoil it for you, but it's like, oh, that's not a surprise. But at least there is some RPG progression. <laughs> so there is that. Um, overall, decent read. Again, you have to, if, you, if you're going to enjoy this, and um, people do, um, you have to be okay with the casual Magical Academy stuff. You have to be okay with this essentially being a serial story that just doesn't necessarily have like this finite, um, you know, three point arc. There's not necessarily a middle beginning and ending uh, arc plan for this. It really is just you're following the main character as he continues on his magical academy journey um, and eventually goes on a dungeoning quest, essentially. Um, there's there's playing like a little small, little fun things he does, but you have to be okay with just kind of following him along, him, him doing his things, finding minor bully enemies in school, um, helping his friends out, ex them exploring their powers and group group abilities and both being banter. Um, there is action in the story yet, mostly from that third party perspective of, of that, um, of following like a more advanced player who's going on his own little adventures. Um, so the, the action does exist in the story, but it, it can, isn't necessarily mostly from the main character. Um, so if you're okay with those things, if you're okay with that serialized kind of uh, slice of light nature of the story, you're gonna like this. And for me, I did as well. I still had a good time with it, but I'm okay with that kind of story. Um, so if, if you if you need like a three four arc structure that has like really finite goals and, and stakes that are like world ending that doesn't exist here. <laughs> this is it's really it's just a slice of life magical academy stuff for the most part, um, and and sometimes RPG progression. In this case, there there was some. Um, so for me, get a score again seven point four out of ten, is slightly below average, like middle of the road goodness because again issues slightly but uh for, for as long as you like slice of life and Commando academy i think you'll enjoy this still uh that's dungeon year the weight of it all a little bit fantasy adventure okay next up is going to be concorded online by cr mcfowl mcfail it'll be 376 pages three dollars and nine cents which is a <laughs> odd price point uh it's a bit one can limited though uh here's the author's description in the 24th century, humans throughout the solar system are connected by Virtuanet, an internet provider and media mogul that spans the gulf of space. While once used for politicking between planets, it is now readily available to all. 
RichieNet offers highly immersive VR MMOs and media. Concordat Online follows the adventures of a player known as Blue Open Sky as they enter the game for the first time. Everything is going well, he forms a bond with his first monster and is leveling steadily with their friends. When the other players get involved manipulating the shadows, Blue and his friends are charged with defeating them, but every action has consequences. Now the starter area of the Meadow Siege is under the threat from a group of rogue NPCs that out-level Blue and his friends... Will they stand and fight, or will they start again in a less problematic zone? Okay, there you go. Uh, first off, that is not a great, that is not a great uh, novel description. Um, it, 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 that's a separate issue. So uh, this is a story that the author actually wrote in the podcast about. Um, he's like, I wrote this thing. Go check if you want to check it out. Um, you know, here's a link to Amazon. Here's my story, essentially. Um, I had an open spot. So I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, give it a shot. It is about a year old since it was published. It has about, like, I think 13 reviews. I'm um, going to think it actually is it, it is better than that. I think more people should give this a shot. Um, it has some interesting... Um, it tries to be unique. Uh, for the most part, it, it, it is a, a slice of life story set into VR MMO, a fantasy VR MMO. So there's nothing necessarily um, groundbreaking with that. Uh, the thing that does differentiate is that it does have pet battles. So it has like this Pokemon aspect of, of taming monsters out in the wild and using them as battle pets. The main characters in the MMO, him and his friends, they fight with their monsters. And so there is a very interesting... Um, gaming mechanic in the story and that not only is the main character able to develop his own class uh he's also able to evolve his pets class and depending on what kind of pet he, he chooses to be getting uh, that that secondary group role um can have a huge variety of effects and compounds plus his own personal magical development is very dependent upon the the pet he chooses um because he'll get one of those pets um elemental um, class and ability uh, class uh, sections. So if like the monster has like lightning, earth, and you know plant life, whatever it is, he might get one of those three as his as his own magical ability. And so choosing the pet you you want is becomes a lot more important because that really does affect his own kind of RPG um, class development or his own. There's no classes, but his own RPG uh, play style element. Um, and so there's a huge variety of monsters and abilities and classes and pets. Um, and so it was very interesting to see them all kind of come together. And that's probably the most unique aspect of the story. Um, I think the things that are probably stopping people from giving this a shot, for one, doesn't say Liberty anywhere in the, in the title, in the story or gamelet. Uh, so people want to know that this is actually a Liberty game story because they remember that being the case for me when I first saw it a year ago. Uh, um, it was like is this I'm like, I'm not sure. I guess I'll top toss it on there. Cause it is a virtual reality and stuff. Um, but I never ended up reading because I, if I have like two dozen titles come out for a week, um, and one of them, and this one doesn't say a little bit of your game. I'm like, I'm less likely to give it a shot Two, the novel description has issues. It's, it's not super engaging. And so just like getting people interested in the story is probably an issue. Um, but I want to say it is, it is worth, it if you have some free time or if you if you just like pet i think you especially like it if you like um a, a a pokemon battle pet aspect to a story um the other parts of the story where the main character is just kind of venturing in mmo i've seen it before um this one doesn't do anything particularly too again groundbreaking with this it does this pretty solid job of like having a a at least a reasonably interesting main character group banter exists here the battles are, are fairly regular and so you get to see some pretty good fight scenes i'm going to say it, it is fairly casual um again there is no like end of the world plot there's no ai here that that's trying to take over the universe um nobody's trapped in the game um so it really is the main character going on like many adventures in this vr MMO setting and he and some of those adventures are really kind of neat um i thought the the, the use of like the ghosty castle was like oh that's don't get to see that very much. Um, and the author does kind of give you the, the kind of end um, story arc in the novel description of him being opposed by other, uh, I think it says other characters. Uh, other, uh, so I don't want to spoil it too much, but like, oh, that, that end part was fairly decent as far as like it's set up in its execution. Um, I want to say the one of the few things I was kind of disappointed in the story about it was probably how that final end quest um, storyline ended up resolving um it, it 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 on the whole the main character does some really good uh opportunity progression and all the quests and everything he becomes more powerful he learns the system he plans his fights out he he kind of develops his character and what, what kind of players he wants 
very good stuff. Um, at the end of the story, the, the, that last quest line isn't unfortunately resolved by the main character. I, was, I, I felt slightly disappointed in that because on all the other quests and all the other parts of the story, the main character is, is sure to be the hero. He's sure to be the one or, or within his group, at least of like figuring out the problem solving and uh, you get good character progression that we said, but that very last quest line, which, which was trying very hard to be epic. Um, it, it just kind of peters out a little bit. The, 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 the big final resolution um, was played out not by the main character but a, a, a third party group kind of intervening and I kind of get as far as like a game mechanic perspective coming in the main character is facing off against enemies who are, are, are double his level um, and so it should be a big challenge for him um, the insertion of, of a third party to resolve it though felt a little I want to say cheap or felt like a little disappointing and the main character just didn't figure something clever out or didn't, didn't use the mechanics to overcome those odds um or maybe set up the odds differently uh instead a third party comes in does resolve things very nicely and then lets the main character go on for potential other adventures um but that that resolution felt a little bit like the author was getting a little bit of a writer fatigue it's like oh, okay I'm, um this thing's going on pretty long i'm gonna resolve this thing the end uh, to a to a degree, and that's what it kind of felt like. So that's kind of the only slight disappointing for me. Other than that, fairly fairly good story. Um, again, overall, the it's a good story with uh, very casual kind of pacing. It was very easy to read. I kind of paused this thing almost in one or two sittings. So the writing style was very easy to progress through. Um, and and again, if you like pet racing, if you like a kind of Pokemon esque aspect to the story. Um, I think this is a pretty good family read. It's family friendly read anyway. So if you like that stuff, I think you'll enjoy it. I had a good time with it. Um, it, it gets a 7.4 out of 10, which is like just slightly below, like, you know, middle of the road good for me because, again, I had slight issues with, with the ending, um, how that final plot line resolved. But other than that, I uh, had a good time with it. So I think it does deserve a little more um, uh, recognition or at least a little more. Uh, uh, than, than 13 reviews like I, I feel like more people will have enjoyed it than than that at least uh so this is a good story i had a good time with it that's score 7.4 out of 10 for concordat online okay next up we have the return to magic should be special this is a webcomic it's also a light novel um but i'm reviewing the webcomic version of it um, it is 141 chapters. The official English publisher is Tappy Tune. Um, here is the webcomic description. The world is on the brink of destruction after a devastating 10-year war with the Shadow Labyrinth. Desir Hernan is one of the latest skilled, well, sorry, the last skilled magician left standing. But even he is no match for the formidable foe threatening humanity's very existence. Just when he's certain the end has come, he is sent back in time to his early days of studying magic at the prestigious Hebron Academy. With this rare second chance, Desir is determined to save not only himself, but also the friends and comrades he once lost. Armed with the knowledge of what their future holds, can his efforts to make a difference or can his efforts make a difference, or are they all doomed to relive the same terrible destiny? So there we go. Um if essentially this is a um this has an English um, mango translation at Tappy Tunes at over 100, 100 chapters there. The fan translations are a little ahead of this at 141 chapters. So just be aware where they set currently and, and it'll continue by probably that pacing. Um, this is a regressor story where someone is set back uh, to an earlier point in their life and where he uses that vast knowledge of the future or magic at least in this case uh, to try to change the fate of humanity. Um, and that's kind of the big series arc line, uh, plot line. Um, now, ultimately, uh, that that only kind of plays in and out of the story a little bit, uh, as far as like, oh, that the big end of the world kind of storyline popping in. Uh, the, there is a good regressor, regressor aspect of the story where the main character is um, going on this like slice of life adventure at this magical academy, um, where he is kind of he's like, oh, that that student's gonna be super powerful. So is that one. This one was my friend, um, even though they've never met yet uh, or haven't interacted. And he's like. I'm going to help them develop the super powerful so that they don't die in the future, essentially. And so you, you, there was this aspect of the main character using his foreknowledge of events in the future to help his friends and his co, uh, potential future comrades uh, become powerful and getting their trust and, and, and helping them to develop so that they have a better chance of like surviving this apocalypse thing that's going to happen in the very far future. Um, I won't say like 20, 30 years, whatever. 
Uh, but along the way, they go on these other adventures. They kind of reveal some of the um, things that are co eventually will cause like that big zombie, that big apocalypse situation. Um, and along the way, he's also in going through magical academy stuff, classes, bullies, whatever the case is. And also, um, this, I, I think the web combat character use is a really smart mechanic, which I've seen in other stories um, of like this um, this artificial. Uh, quest system where he kind of goes into the artificial dungeons and goes on these um, adventures where they're recreations of history. Um, and I thought that was a really good use of that kind of um, holodeck kind of mechanic where the main character and his group can go on these quests, can do RPG regression, can can develop their own power. So you, but at the same time, you're also revealing something, uh, doing some world building about the history of the of this universe. Um, and each one of these little like mini nugget adventures kind of is something to reveal like what are the fundamental flaws of the society? What are these issues? What are these secret truths? And I thought that was really kind of a nice way to break up those th those uh, those other arcs. So good stuff there. I had a good, really good time with this. Um, it really always generally fun to see the main character beat the naysayers, beat his bullies, um, and and just kind of going these adventures and using that you know foreknowledge and this foreknowledge of of, of being a, a great maid in the future and having already developed the theories to to control his um, understated power. Um, in good and interesting ways. So good stuff overall. Get the score 7.6 out of 10. Um, that's a return to Magic Should Be Special. The score 7.6 out of 10. I'm actually going to pop in um, just some uh, the first chapter so you guys can see the artwork and you can judge it for yourself. Generally, good stuff, clean lines, good backgrounds, um, and good little details. And so nice regular releases for this. I think it's a, a weekly release schedule. Um, for the uh, fan translated itself, which you can find online because it is an English translator already, English, official English licensor, we're going to direct you to Tappy Tunes uh, for the official uh, English versions of this. And you can see the regressor aspect of it. And the good artwork always helps, um, you know, show off emotions and stuff. So good, good stuff there overall. So, oh, there we go. Yay. Regressor story. Okay. Okay. So there we go, folks. That is a review of uh, The Return of Magic Should Be Special. Okay, that is it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. Um, remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, on our website at littlebittypodcast.com. Of course, you can follow the podcast as an uh, audiobook or audio listening schedule at Spotify, Audible. You can find us on any of your podcasting apps, all kinds of great places, or you just, you know, check us out on our website where we're always at the latest episodes plus the entire back catalog of over 260 episodes for you to enjoy. Um, and I think we'll be on other platforms soon. Has it happened? So we'll talk about it when it happens. But again, you can always find all the ways to support the podcast. Keep it free and ad-free at littlebeachpodcast.com slash support. Um, so again, thanks for hanging out with me. And until we can again, remember to go read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>